A boom, 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 boom. They're gonna shoot you right down. The whole trick about this is how you're moving your hand, what I call mechanics. How your hand is actually moving through the notes. If you're just playing those notes, it's not gonna sound right. A lot of it is actually really similar to Hill Country Blues, where we're doing kind of a percussive type, strumming type thing, and then filling in the notes with the left hand, where the right hand, if you noticed in the video, his hand like never stops moving. He's just kind of doing this the whole time. Here it is, it's John Lee Hooker. Let's check it out. All righty now. The little thing was a tremendous thing for me. A great success, a lot of blues groups did it. And a lot of pop groups did it. The little thing you call boom boom. He's doing a little noodling. I'm gonna shoot you right down. Intro riffs, very famous intro riffs. And here's the main riff. So he does these really famous intro riffs that we've all heard before, and we'll go over those riffs one by one, but what he plays most of the time is this one. Boom, 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 boom. That's the main riff that we're gonna do. I've heard people play it a couple different ways. And I'm gonna give you some variations. Again, we're gonna come back to that riff at the end, and I'll teach you how the best way to work on it. The tabs, if you just play the notes in the tab, it's not gonna sound right. Even though the notes are correct in the tab, you have to do the right kind of strumming type thing, okay? So we'll come back to that towards the end of the video, but let's keep watching. Uh, when you're talking to me, There's that riff. That baby talk. I just like it like that. Or when you talk like that. Groove so hard, he's got his foot tapping, both feet tapping. into a jam part. Here in the jam part, um, you just kind of hold this E7 chord and then take your pinky or third finger. I think he's using his third finger every time. But on that third fret of the second string, kind of up and down. And the right hand's playing kind of a strumming pattern going like one and two and three and four and with the, that hard shuffle beat. And then start taking the pinky up and down. He kind of does that pattern a lot where it's down, so it's like the pinky will go down, and then two where it's open. So it's down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. And I'm saying down, up following the pinky motion, not the right hand. So it's down, up, up, 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 down, up. That kind of motion, okay? He does almost that same thing coming up up here in this uh, ninth position. Let's keep watching. There it is, cool trim, tremolo strum. Actually, let's watch that again. He does this really cool tremolo strum. That's where you're kind of doing a fast strum. He uses index finger and kind of the pad part of his finger just to kind of rub it across like that. And he only does that the one time, just as an accent. There's that tremolo strum. The same kind of thing he was doing before. Let me show you there. So there he's, this is what's called an E6 chord, okay? And it's just ninth position, top four strings. If you want to play an E7, put the middle finger down there on the 10th fret, and then what we call a long form, 
which comes from this what we call long A. This is the same form, but it's an E, so this is just an E chord. And again, he's doing that same kind of thing, like down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. And again, that's with the motion of the pinky. Now I'm holding my hand like this so that y'all can see my pinky move up and down. Don't hold your hand like that. And then kind of the same thing over the E7. And the one thing I want to talk about with the right hand is this right motion, how he's doing the strumming. He's going down with the thumb, up with the index finger, and then it's just back and forth like that. So that's something you should get used to doing, like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Fret. Back to the end. Watch that foot tap there, that's awesome. A little bendy phrase. It kind of uh, reminds me of that Chuck Berry riff. Now, if you can't bend this second fret here very easily, here's a couple tips. Try to use multiple fingers. Now, you can see he only is really using maybe two fingers, uh, his first and second. You know, I like to use three. This is a really difficult bend in this position. And then again, if that's still too hard, you can always... Okay, you can always do that little slide instead. Okay. Kind of a piano solo, so he's just adding. Kind of some accents just on that spot where we have that E6 chord. playing a 12 bar blues. There's the five chord, back to the one. Now, the rest of the song though is basically just a one chord vamp. And the rest of the musicians are following John Lee. Some of the intro phrases now. Yeah, there's the intro phrases. Would you want that wall? Nice. And some of that talk. And whisper in my ear. Tell me that you love it. Alright. I love that talk. That those left hand fingers are commuting. When you talk like that, she knocked me dead. That all my some groove going just with how scratch rhythm with this guitar. And how, how, how. Click, 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 click. Can you hear that? He's always doing that. He's kind of keeping that rhythm going. It's a percussion instrument at this point. Um, and he's just muting the strings out. You can see his fingers kind of moving up and down like this. And I think sometimes he kind of wants just the tiniest bit of that on the top. It's really hard to hear that, but you know, I think sometimes he's just, that's why he's moving his fingers up and down, so he can kind of just get kind of just a tiny bit of those top notes when he does the upstroke. But mostly you just hear those clicks, right? Oh, baby. Part's cool. <laughs> Bringing his hand over the top. It changes the sound of the clicks. So it makes him a little bit more high pitched. You can see his left hand's moving. To kind of 
change the pitch of it a little bit. <laughs> it opened it up and hit a little E there. That was cool. I'm gonna back that up and show you what I did that. He does those pops. I love that sound. So this is the end of it. Nice. That was cool. So I love those pops that he does. Uh, you know, one of my favorite players, Steve Ray Vaughn, does that all the time. And it's fun to do. It has a really cool sound to it. I love that. But to do that, you just kind of like get your thumb under the string, the E string like that, and just pull it up like more than you normally would. Because if I just hit a note, it just doesn't sound right. Like it's got to have that pop. All right. So this was great. So now I'm going to tab a lot of those things in the video that we talked about the important bits and, and I'll teach you how to play it, but more importantly, how to approach practicing it because you can't just play the notes on the tab. That's not going to sound right at all. Okay. All right. Let's start actually with the main phrase. That phrase, uh, because it's kind of tricky and it actually comes up a lot more than the intro phrases. And then we'll come back to the intro phrases after that. So here we go. So the whole thing is going to be like this, a boom, 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 boom. That's the phrase. Now, if you're looking at the tabs right now, if you just played the notes of the tabs, right? It doesn't sound like anything. It's not musical at all. The whole trick about this is how you're moving your hand, what I call mechanics, how your hand is actually moving through the notes. If you're just playing those notes like I played, it's not going to sound right. So this kind of the mechanics in this song, a lot of it is actually really similar to Hill Country Blues, where we're doing kind of a percussive type strumming type thing and then filling in the notes with the left hand, where the right hand, if you noticed in the video, his hand like never stops moving. He's just kind of doing this the whole time. So the phrase is like this, a boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's the whole phrase. It's really, really short, but it's kind of tricky. So let's check it out. What you want to do is have your hand set up for this E chord, but with just two fingers. So you can kind of mute this A string with the second finger. And then you're going to have second finger and first finger playing the rest of this E chord. Then you need the third finger or the pinky to play that third fret of the second string. So you can kind of get this sound. The whole rhythm of it, the first two beats are going to be like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Two, three, four, one. And two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, let's take a look at that right hand. When we're doing this, it's got to be boom, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. You've got to do the mechanic right there because if you're just playing those notes, it's not going to sound right. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump into my build method in order to learn this. The build method is where you keep the rhythm intact and then you add notes as you go along. This is the very best method for learning lots of songs, but especially hill country blues and this style of blues where the mechanic is the most important thing and the rhythm, the mechanics and the rhythm are way more important than getting the notes. Okay. So let's set up a metronome and then I'll show you how to do that build method. So we got the metronome clicking at 70 BPM right now. And you got to make sure that you can have your hand clicking like this. Okay. We're aiming for the higher strings, like the top four strings. And we're going downs with the clicks, with the thumb, and then with a the swing beat, and two, and three, and four, on the ands, up with the finger. Okay? Now don't try to aim, just strum. So we're just going to start with this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. And two, and three, and four, pinky up and pinky down. Three, and four, and one. Okay? Then we're gonna add the third note, which is in the and of two. So it goes like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. And two, and three, and four, and one. And four, and one. Okay, now notice, don't try to aim. Just keep the hand going like this. So we're going. 
lift on that third one. Okay. Now the third, the fourth note is going to be this bend. That's going to go with a down with the thumb. Okay. So it's okay to get this extra noise. We kind of want that. The way that I recommend to do the bend is with three fingers. Okay. So get this third finger on, on that second fret. So you can really push high up there. Okay. Now bending all the way up to pitch is not totally necessary, but it's something that'll help. Okay. So we try it like this, adding that bend. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, four, and one. And two, and three, and four, and one. And two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, now we're gonna add that. The upstroke. Okay, now we got the whole riff. So it goes. I've heard him play it a few different ways, actually. You might have also heard this version too. Now, what I tabbed out here and what we're working on is exactly what he plays the whole time in that performance that we saw at the beginning. But sometimes he plays this instead, almost like kind of reverse. Instead of starting with, he starts with. Boom, 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 boom. Do shoot you right down. And I think that might be a common way for him to play, but in this version, he for sure is going. <laughs> and is it different? I'll try to play both back and forth, see if you can even tell the difference. So I'll start with the version that we're working on and then the alternate version. One, two, three, four. And so it goes like this. A boom, 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 boom. We're gonna shoot you right down. Back to the first one. The second one. So I don't know, Can is it easy to tell the difference? For me, not really, but either way, I think both ways sound really cool. Um, but stick to one for now, and then if you really want to do the variation, go for it. If you hate doing the bend or you just can't do the bend or after a while your fingers are super sore and you just can't do it anymore, play it with a slide instead. It's so like this. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Now on that last little note, you can hit either just that note or the chord partial or kind of a big chord stab like that. Okay, I like to kind of hit the whole chord, but you can also just hit the low E string. Like that. So there's four riffs he plays right at the beginning and they sound like this. you right down and into that main riff we already talked about so the four riffs are this okay and then he always kind of follows it up with now in this live version he you can he, he's not really doing the response phrase which this is the call he's not really doing that he's kind of playing that but it's almost muted out so much where you can't hear it so for this, I think it's best just to play the. Boom, 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 boom. I like to play a lot of this with my thumb or, you know, kind of thumb and index combination. If you watch him play, he actually plays everything with the index finger which actually, you know, sounds cool. It has kind of some of the cool uh, extra notes. 
it kind of sounds, I think, a little bit more authentic if you kind of use that index finger, but it's not totally necessary to do it to play the riff. So we have this uh, first riff, okay, sliding two to four up using this shape, second and first fingers. Um, start with the thumb, then up break with the index finger, then slide back down to the second fret, and then O2, O2, okay, the rhythm's like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Two, three, four, one. Second riff goes like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Two, three, four, one. Okay, one more time. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. Two, three, four, one. On the end of two, where we have that slide, make sure you slide down into that note from above. Now, when it says that, you can slide in from three or four. Just make sure that the slide is really fast. So it sounds like this. Okay, that's th that's riff two. Riff three is like this. One and two and three and four and one. Again, use any finger or your thumb for plucking all these notes. And then back to boom, 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 boom. And then the fourth riff is exactly the same as the second riff. Just one and two and three and four and one. Two, three, four, one, boom, 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 boom. And then back into the main riff that we've been talking about. Remember that build method. It's really important. It's the best way to do it. And it, and it really kind of helps with the mechanics going down and up. That's the main thing to remember is as long as you're going, kind of giving it almost a strum, then it's gonna sound right. If you, again, if you try to go, right? It's never going to sound right just hitting the notes in the tab. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.